Okay, so we've decided to check the bushes and replace the kingpins on this little grey Fergie. We've taken the hub off, that's in another video. So now to get this kingpin out, we have a new kingpin and I'll have to I'll have to look up which is left and which is right. And all the bottom part of the kingpin, I'll just take this out of the packet. The bottom half of the kingpin is the same. The only difference between left and right is this mark here, and that's the relief for this bolt here. So I would suggest that this one here is for this side because when I line that up straight, this bolt lines up through there. So we're going to fit a new kingpin and we're also going to replace the bushes in the kingpin housing here. So we'll start with undoing the bolts on the bell crank at the top here. So, yep, you can see that. I just got to look at the monitor and just <laughs> check what you can see and what you can't. I can't actually see the monitor whilst I'm um, talking to you. I've seen other channels and they have a big monitor over on the wall and boy, wouldn't that be great. It'd be great if I had the right size bloody spanner too, really. It's hard to find good help. Hey. Okay, I'll get the right. I'm spanner. back with the correct spanners this time. You think a bloke been mechanic for years would get that right, wouldn't you? Now, eleven sixteen fits that. The thread would be seven sixteen UNF. Nothing wrong with the bolt there. We can certainly use that again. Now, on this bell crank at the top here. You can't, you can't just get a hammer and knock that down. Now you can't just go bang, bang, bang down because at the back of your kingpin here, you have a key. So you need to get this arm up and remove the key before you can draw the kingpin down lower. A couple of differences, see the, the size of the steering stop there, it's quite a bit larger here. Anyway, that's probably not going to be a problem at all. So to get this off, you can come in under there. I'll take everything off that's going to fall on the ground and make a noise. And sometimes I have an old screwdriver here and sometimes I just pop that in to take the load a bit. And you'll notice once you've done that it does come a lot easier to come off. Don't jam that in too tight, there's no need. But there's our Pitman arm. That looks in good order. What you're looking for here too is in the, um, in the taper. Where can you see that? There may be. Make sure the taper's good. And if, the, if the Pitman arm was, or if the steering arm was good, you have nothing to worry about. Okay, now... With that over out of the way, we can get this keyway out, or key, not keyway. Now you can do that or you can just come in with a punch, either way. Don't lose that, you can use it again, there's no reason why you can't. If it's nice and parallel up the sides and it hasn't been butchered, um, you should be okay. Now this kingpin should come out. I might, um, I might give that a bit of a spray with a bit of lube and just give this a bit of a tidy up. Just try and make sure it's got a bit of help on the way out. Now 
bit of possum pee. And this should... Yeah, hitting it at the top like that, like I'm doing, is not a good idea. Um, reason being, if you get a little mushroom burr over there, you're in trouble. So. Often these just fall out. There we go. Now on this kingpin here, what we look at is there's often a lot of wear down the bottom here where it takes all the load. And you can see the shiny mark there, that's, that's quite grooved and it's quite rusty and up the top here I can feel how it gets thin, then goes out wider again. So we're bushing that, it's scrap, a bit for the recycling, for the beer fund. Now the bushes, just to do a test bit in here. So because it hasn't got the dirt in that in it, you can see You can see that it'll knock back and forth. Perhaps this way I'll go so you can see it. Or you can hear it clunking anyway. Okay, so we'll clean this up. Okay, now we've got the kingpin out. The when we look at the kingpin bush, this is the bush here, and you may be able to see a, a split up here. So it's a split bush and sometimes when they get worn they get quite thin and if you can get a, an o-ring pick and run around the top here and the bottom and try and look for that split um, and just hit on that, um, what I try and do is I have a screwdriver, it's in my old bashing screwdriver and it's rounded at the back so I don't mark the outer and it's flat on the front so I actually try and bring that round edge down in just next to that split if I can find it. Now look, sometimes you just can't find it and you just got to bash away and make a right bloody mess of it. But um, it is, they are a hard thing to get out. Um, the other thing we could possibly do is get a um, uh, uh, expanding bush, uh, an expanding mandrel and, and pull it out like that. Um, another thing that we haven't got out yet, oh, some of these need reaming, um, a lot of them do, and that there's quite a tight fit. And I think we'll find that once we press that into the housing here, we'll need to run an inch and a quarter ream down through there. So we'll just have to see with that. I, I think that'll be the case. Most times it is the case. And there are steel outer with a bronze inner. Good, like great bush. The, um, they'll last for many years once you've done them. Now, down the bottom here, that's what I was looking for, that's the thrust bearing. Now, that sits up in the, there's a shoulder up in here, and that sits in there. Then the thrust bush, or thrust bearing I should say, it goes onto the kingpin. Now, I'll just get one out and show you while it's nice and, it's nice and clean. Now the Sparex number for that is S40226, but it's part of the 40, where's my numbers again, 40217, I think I said 9 before because I had the wrong kit in my hand. So, so that's the thrust bearing, so the main kingpin bearing here, 
it sits down on that like that. And that's what the whole weight of the tractor sits on. Now if you're, um, if you're having trouble steering, your Fergie's got a bit tight to steer, you can look for, you can grease this to start with, but sometimes these get quite worn and they crumble up. So a little bit of grease or a, a new bearing there may do the job. But that actually sits up in the housing here. There's a little place for it. Now, it goes with the tin side. You'll, you'll notice there's a tin side, the tin's here and wrapped around the corner. Then there's a hardened bearing surface there. That hardened bearing surface goes down and the little tin shield, it goes up and, and holds up in the housing here. So for the moment though, we will try and um, see if we can get a couple of these bushes out without bodging the whole show up. Um, I'll see if I can find that that join. Wouldn't mind betting it's over there, but I can't I can't actually prove <laughs> prove it to myself. I can't feel it and I'll see if I can feel it going going around the side. Wouldn't mind betting it's there. I'll have a bit of a tap there and just see if we can get on top of it. Yep. That's it. Okay, I'll shift the camera so you can come down and have a look. Okay, I've got the O-light on my hat and you can just see the, the bush there. And we did get lucky and got the, got the edge of it. So once you've loosened it like that, it should just pop out. You can, you can fold him up a little bit. We shouldn't have done too much damage on the inner surface. And there you go. They're not always that easy. Now finding the split on the bottom might be another story altogether as well. But look, we're going to have a go for it. Okay, and see we shifted we the camera. I've, I've come up down the bottom end there and I was lucky enough to find the groove again. And you can see where I've come up. I've collapsed the bush pretty well. And now I should be able to come down the top there and probably bump it out. I'll just see how I go. I can't see what I'm doing now. The camera's, the camera's in the way. But I'll try and bring that up in there. Yeah, so that's so you can see the point of it anyway I'm going to have to shift the camera so I can come down and just bump that out now but if you're lucky enough to find that join go for it um, I've been able to find it on this one so I'm, I'm quite pleased Okay, you can see from looking down the top there, you can see that I found the split in the bush. So now we just need to come down with a bar or a punch or something like that. And once the tension's gone off the bush, we can actually pull it out. And you can see how it's collapsed there. And that's from the screwdriver. This rounded back screwdriver um, coming up and finding the split and once it pops in once it sits inside there and the tension comes off it um, yeah the, the tension's away and away you go so what I'll do now I, I, look I won't film this I'll clean up in here I'll get a bit of um, bit of degreaser and 
I'll tidy that up. I'll pull this grease nipple out and make sure that is greasable and flush any grease out that's in there, make sure it works. And I'll come back when we're ready to pull these new bushes. Okay, out. I've cleaned all the housing out here and I've taken the grease nipple out. Now, the grease nipple we're going to replace, the little ball in the end is no longer there. So we'll just put a new one in there once we're done. But by fitting the new bushes here, I'm going to put the join at the front, sort of like they were, very similar to that. Now, the theory behind doing this is if we hold this, well, well the way we're going about it, I should say, not, not the theory so much, is we're going to get a, a bit of threaded rod and bring a piece in up from the bottom. Now, the piece up from the bottom, it'll sit up in the housing here and by having a fairly snug fit in where this thrust bearing will go, um, that'll line this bar up this way and by bringing a, a plate down the top there, we should be able to by oiling it up, we should be able to pull it in with this threaded rod and pull them in straight. We may have to give it a little bump. That's just par for the course. We know we have to do that at times. But um, I'll get set up and we'll start pulling, a, pulling the top bush in here at the least. We'll start with that and see how we go. What I'm going to do here, I'm just going to pop a... This is a bit of 10 mil threaded rod just for want of something different. Then we're putting a 54 millimetre disc up in the bottom end here. Now that disc will sit up nicely in the housing there and we know because that's sitting in nicely that will be holding this threaded rod pretty well straight. So I could probably go an awful lot shorter with this threaded rod but anyway I thought I'd bugger I didn't really want to cut it down. Now you can see if we just tried to pull it any old how we can we can still be out quite a bit but by pulling the by pulling the top down lining this bottom one up trying to pull the top down as square as we can we might be able to go all right now you can feel that's just started to push down now so I'll run the nut okay. down and I'll come back. I've got the threaded rod down and I'm looking across here to try and make sure I'm pretty well square there. I'm going to put a heap of oil around it to help it all in. Actually I might put a heap of oil inside too. Now I'm trying to be straight this way and that way if I possibly can. And look, we're not doing too bad, I don't think. It feels good. If I give this just a little bump, it'll just... That feels like it's going okay. All right, I need a 16 millimeter spanner. So... I have it here. So I'll just try and see if I can start bringing this down nice and gentle, keeping it in place as I go. This is a 36 millimeter disc I'm using at the top here. And you can feel that's just pulling down a bit. Now that's gone a little crooked, which we don't want. Now I could have turned up in the lathe something that would stay right true here too, but I thought I'd just be able to get this done without a worry. So that feels like it's going in nicely now.
just back him off and make sure she's all sitting nice. And this way we hopefully we're not burring up the edge. And look, there's no pressure there, so I'm pretty confident I'm going in straight. Just try and keep that lined up nicely if I can. Sometimes backing it off gives you a chance to just realign, get a feel for it again. But I'm finding that by doing that it actually becomes a bit easier the next time. We're just going to be crooked there with the disc, so we'll just straighten that disc up once more. I hope I'll use the right end down this other end. I've been doing this 40 years. I'll just give this a bit of a... straighten up there. Once we bottom this bush out, we'll know whether we need to ream the kingpin bushes in this instance. No, it'd be better to turn the bottom one. Okay, so that's just below the top there now. That's all we need to do. We'll just run this down again.
And there we have a nice bush. There's no burr on the top. It feels good. Okay, what I'm doing now, just to um, just to check if we're going to need to go up the house and get the reams, reamers, reams, reamers. Oh look, that's lovely. Tell you, Mum. Beautiful. Okay, looks like we're getting out without having to do it with these. Some I've had to, so with the Sparex kit, it looks like we don't have to ram the bushes. And Man, is that a big saving. <laughs> if you buy another brand and you've got a reamer, it's a pain in the bum. Okay, I'll do the same and I'll pull the bottom bush up and we'll come back when we set it up in there. Okay, again. I've got the bottom bush pressed in and what I like to do now is just do a dummy run and... What I'm checking for is that there's no burrs on the bushes. That we don't need to ream them or do anything like that. And if it comes right up in here and out the top, we know that we've got our bushes nice and true. Look at that. That's just lovely. God, you're handy, Lance. <laughs> okay, let's move along. Now we've got the kingpin in our hot little hands. If I put it there, it'll probably fall off. Yep, it will. We can turn our attention to this thrust bearing. Now, it's just a, a roller bearing. Um, it's, it's not a tapered roller, I believe it's just a straight roller bearing. And what I like to do here is put a bit of grease in there. Now, look, just use your normal grease. Don't get all excited about my flashy looking orange grease here. This is some suspension grease that I've had tucked away and I've just been using it for odd jobs over the time. And but don't get too worried. You can see it's good grease. It's actually Maury's. Um, they call it Maury's Bigfoot. And you can see how it strings out on you. And I like it on suspension and things like that. But look, if you're a mobile man or a shell man or whatever you are, or woman, yeah, me presuming you're a bloke. Bloody hell, Lance. Hey, that's not bloody how we do it nowadays, is it? Okay, so we'll put some grease there. We'll get some on here. Stick our finger in the hole and bloody do some there. And we'll do similar. In here. There's no need to fill this big cavity in here full of grease at this stage. Um, the grease gun will do that at a later date. So I'll just put the top on this grease so I don't um, go kicking dirt into it or something. Alright, so the tin side of the thrust goes up. So if we slide that pillar down there, the hard surface goes down, so I can get my ugly dial in here for a minute. Okay, we're going to have to bump that up, I'll just get rid of this grease. Do a check on that bearing. Come off there. I think there's a tin piece still stuck up in there. Let's have a look. this up where it can't make a mess. Oh yes. Okay, I should have picked this up earlier. If you have a look there, you'll see there's no tin cover on this bearing. 
So the tin cover's still stuck up inside. So I have to get that out. I would feel a little lippy now, you know, and I wasn't bright enough to pick it up. and come in the outside there and that feels like it okay there's the tin that I left in there okay I better give all this a wipe up again now Feel that's going up in there nicely now. Okay. I'll leave all my balls up in there because if I'm making them, you might be making them too. Yeah, you never know, I might have a special knack for stuffing everything up. So look at that. That turns nicely. And that's a lovely fit. Like you couldn't wish for better. Okay, I'll put my knee under there to hold that up tight. Now, there's a felt. Now that felt sits up in here really, so sometimes it can be a bit of a fiddle to get in. Like it sits in there like that. But you can't put that in yet because we have to bring this down over the key. So the felt has to go on now. Push him down nice and deep. Now the key, the key I run on the wire brush on the side of the grinder there just to um, take any rust in that off it. Excuse my noggin, I'm just trying to make sure it's all looking good. Looking good like my head, yeah. <laughs> Christ, that. Now we should be able to bring this down gently over the key. And we've got to make sure this key doesn't want to slide out the back. And sometimes it can do that. So once it's started, make sure she stays in. Okay, now that won't fall out for the moment, we'll get this bolt started, now you'll notice that on top of the kingpin the bolt, the groove wasn't exactly really tight and that's so we can actually jack the tractor up on this and have this come right down hard. So I'll try and get it down as hard as I can. You can see the felt's gone up in under the um, arm there. There's no, no up and down movement there.
and we should be able to tighten that up. Near the shed creek and in the background here, but that's that's just part of working in my shed. My sand equipment takes a lot of it out, but there is still some there. Okay, there you go. It goes right round stop to stop. There's no movement there. And when the weight comes down on the tractor, you can always loosen this and just bump that down again. But I think we've got it pretty good here. Um, I don't think we're doing too bad. So I've probably just been out of, out of range there a little bit because the axle lifted. So there you go. Get you back down there. So there's something written on the top of that kingpin. So I've never noticed. I'll just have a quick look and see if it's of any importance. Oh, it's just a part number, S15984. Left hand. Okay. As soon as I learn to read, I come good. Yep. Okay, we'll tidy this up. That covers the kingpin. I'll do the other side while I've got all the gear out now. And we'll go on to how to replace the wheel bearing.